Hi, everybody. This is Val Hart. I'm the real Dr. Doolittle, and I'm here with my very special guest, professional colleague, Carol Gurney of the Gurney Institute. And I want to tell you just really quick where this is all about. Um, this is a series of professional interviews with my colleagues. Inten our intention is to bring you into our world to help share what we know when we work with animals. We are animal communicators, pet psychics, animal whisperers, if you will. Um, we are dedicated to giving your voice and uh, give your animal a voice because we believe that animals come into your lives for a reason. When we learn to recognize, respect, and revere them for who they truly are, then we become better people. We and the world the, needs us to be the best that we can possibly be. So we're here to inspire you today. Our topic is animals as our mirrors. And so let me tell you about Carol. Um, and by the way, this is part of the Animal Talk Coaching Club. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about that, check out the Animal Talk Coaching Club dot com. Um, so come into our world. I want to tell you about Carol. Uh, Carol Gurney is from the Gurney Institute, a very wonderful organization. She's internationally respected as one of the foremost experts and pioneers in the world of animal communication education. She's traveled the globe. She's known the world over. And she teaches animal lovers how to communicate with their animals. She's authored a wonderful book, The Language of Animals, Seven Steps to Communicating with Animals. It's really good book. It's um, If you're going to get at least one book, or get that one. Okay. So she has, also has a library of instructional CDs and DVDs and all that's on her website at the uh, gurneyinstitute.org. I believe that's correct. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Carol? That's it. That's it. Excellent. Yeah, there you go. GurdyInstitute.org. Okay. Um, Carol has also, uh, she teaches weekly teleclasses uh, as well on their website, so check that out. Um, she's also taught and lectured at the Best Friends uh, Animal Sanctuary, Whole Life Expos, the Equine Affair Conferences, Kinship with All Life Conference with Jane Goodall. Uh, she's been featured on TV shows in Korea, Germany, the, the United States. She's been featured in the LA Times, the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Maui Weekly, as well as Equus, the Chronicle of the Horse, Body, Mind, Spirit, Horse Illustrated. I can, I'm sensing a theme of horse here. <laughs> little horsey, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to name just a few. So, Carol, I'm, I'm just delighted to have you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ah, thank you for having me. My gosh, this is my absolute favorite thing to do is to talk <laughs> about what I love, you know, animal communication. So, um, I thank you for the invite, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm delighted. So let's jump in because we're going to try to hit our time mark today if possible. Yeah. We're going to do our best. Um, so our topic is animals as our mirrors and it, it, it has to do with animals reflecting us. It, it, but I want, you know, you, you've really pioneered and done a lot of work with this concept. Tell us about it. How did you discover that animals are our mirrors and what does that mean anyway? Yeah, yeah. It, um, how I discovered it was a client calling me one day and uh, wanting to really help his dog because when he was in a room with people, the dog would go on attack mode uh, to the folks. and But he could leave the room and the dog would be very friendly. And he would come back into the room and the dog would go on attack mode again. And he was very perplexed by this. Um, nobody seemed to have an answer and so the dog was muzzled for eight years. And when I talked to the dog Unfortunately, I didn't get a thing. So, of course, I thought, oh my God, where did my abilities go? They just went down the toilet. <laughs> but, <yeah>. Oops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, but he was very open, very, very nice man. And so we began to talk about, he shared about his personal life and social life that he doesn't go out a lot. He'll only go to his parents' house and then come, you know, go back home. And I said, well, why is that, John? And he said, I'm really not comfortable around people. And I said, well, how uncomfortable do you get? And he said, well, I feel that I could be hurt by people. And that was it. The light bulb went on for him. And it did for me. And he said, oh, my God, Carol, this isn't about my dog, is it? It's about me. 
And I said, yes, but I'm just finding that out myself. And I, I am now seeing that if an animal won't talk to me at all, that's my clue that says, look within the family, something is going on. So he said, what do I do, you know, to let go of that fear? And so I said, John, it's, it's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. It could be uh, a therapist, um, a coach, whatever. But if you can find the root and the cause of the fear and let it go, your animal isn't going to have anything to protect you from. But what the animal fears from you every time, you know, feels from you is every time you're around people, your fear comes up of people. And so the animal gets that and, and loves you very much and wants to keep you safe. So he's going to push those people away from you. But so many of us think it's the animal. We want to fix the animal. And in this case, it had nothing to do with the animal. And it was really a person's issue. And so that that started in the beginning of my uh, practice, and that is really what convinced me to go into animal communication. When I could see that bigger, bigger, um, uh, you know, e expansive aspect of who animals are in our lives, and that they can mirror us and help us learn so much more about ourselves, I said, "I'm in. I'm in. That's what I want to do." So that's how it all began. And um, I want people to know that animals don't always reflect our behavior, but a lot of times they do. They're also going through their stuff as well. And th it's funny how we both come together because we've experienced what they're going through, so we're the best person that can help them get through their stuff. And then sometimes they're there to help us get through our stuff. So we exchange roles. We're the teachers, they're the teachers um, at times. So um, what I did was I applied it to my own life, obviously. I thought I have to walk my talk here. And I remember my dog, Jessie. Um, she's on the cover of the book. She was in a um, gold, uh, not a golden retriever, a border collie mix. And one of the things with her, her behavior was that every time I called her, she wouldn't come. And I started getting really angry about that. But after a while, my anger started turning into rage. And I thought, I, it scared me. And I thought, what is this all about? And thank God I knew more that it had nothing to do with Jesse. And I said, what am I mad at? So this is the process of what you go through. You see um, a behavior and you ask yourself, you know, what is that behavior? Why am I angry? And for me, what it was, um, was I felt, what am I angry at? Well, I was angry at the fact that she was being a free spirit. She was going out there and doing exactly what she wanted to do. And I was mad at that. And I thought, but Carol, it has nothing to do with her. When did you experience that? And of course, what happened is my childhood came up. I was pretty much raised by the nuns, and we had so many rules that there wasn't much you could do um, that was kind of good in life. So everything was based on, on fear. And so what I decided to do is I said, okay, so she's trying to show me what it's like to be a free spirit. And I'm an adult now, and I have a, I have a choice. Do I want to allow myself to have that freedom to do what I want to do or am I going to choose to stay limited so that's what she was showing me and again we all have choices my choice was I wanted to be a free spirit and one of the things I loved to do was dance but I wasn't allowing myself to do that so you can imagine I was on the phone calling a dance studio trying to arrange some lessons that's great so, <laughs> It changed my life, you know, but you have to be willing to look at it. If you have five animals in your household, each one of them is going to be an aspect of who you are. Now, you may not like to look at one of those aspects of who you are, but they really are. Um, and it's up to us to, when we see an odd behavior, is to take a look at that and say, hmm, 
okay, I'll, I'll help the animal through that, but is there anything here about this behavior that I need to learn for me? So I, I tell my clients it's the greatest therapy we could ever hope to have. It's free, <laughs> you know, and we have a lot, a lot to learn. Um, I have another cat. Uh, she's passed now, but happy cat. Happy Cat's behavior was constant licking to the point where she would look, lick the hair off of the back legs and off of her belly. Um, so obviously I wanted to check her out um, and she did have some physical issues. She was a pixie bob and they don't have a tail. And when animals don't have a tail sometimes they do have impulses that go down their spine. And so, yes, there was some physical stuff. I definitely had to take a look at that. And I thought, but is there something for me to be aware of? And I looked at that and I went, okay, so what she's doing is licking, 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 and she just won't stop. And I thought, okay, so what do I do that's continual and I keep going and going and going? And I, I thought, oh, my God, that, that's me. Because <laughs> I would work, 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 work and then not stop and go to another project to another project and it's nine o'clock and I still haven't um, finished. That sounds very familiar. <laughs> yeah, and then she would actually, Val, she would actually crawl over to the phone, go over to my phone and sit on the phone <laughs> to say, stop, yeah. you know? Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what so I left that and went, me, 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 me. So a lot of times when we make that change, it helps them. For instance, after I t started taking dance lessons, when I called Jessie, she would come. Mm -hmm. So things definitely uh, change there. I um, want to share another story just so you can see. This is a, a client of mine, two female cats, one male cat. And the two female cats attacked the male cat. The woman called and said, Carol, what's going on with them? We had to separate them. It got so bad. Um, and all I got from the two female cats were, we want to kill them. We want to kill them. And I knew, because there wasn't more information than that, that again, that was my clue. Look to the family. So I started talking with her. And I said, you know, by any chance, um, is there something going on between you and your husband? Are you mad? Uh, at him for some reason and she said oh I wish you didn't ask me this <laughs> but yes she said there is she said my job has gotten um, uh, you know it's just going and going and going she was a um, a um, an artist and she was also a singer and so she was going on tour and what happened is she was gone a lot and her husband began to develop new friends to, to share his emotions with, you know, because they had such a close relationship. They would talk about their emotions back and forth, and that's one thing that she loved about the relationship. But when she came back in town, he wasn't really doing that much with her because his needs were taken care of with his new family of friends. And she was mad. So I said, what would be helpful to the cats is if you talk about it. Share that with your husband. Tell him what's going on for you on a feeling level. And um, hopefully that will help. She called me back the next day. She said, Carol, I talked with my husband. Everything is fine. So we decided to let the cats out of the different rooms. She said, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> I love it. So, so it's like very that. amazing how yeah. that behavior reflects us. But if we do something about it, we can change the dynamic for both the people and, of course, the uh, the animals. Yes. So they, um, yeah, that reminds me of so many stories. You know, for, I don't, don't know. Um, for me, I learned pretty pretty early on in my career that if I didn't bring the human into the equation, that I couldn't really affect long term change for the animal because they ha they felt such an obligation and were so committed yeah. to helping their person by mirroring uh, whatever was going on or acting it out for them or you mm -hmm. know they, they hear us they know what we're thinking and how we're feeling they get our attitudes our beliefs yes. you know and then they will carry that forward in, in some way so we can see it again our mirror Absolutely. right um, and, you know I've had um, 
I, so anyway, I, I learned in my work that if I couldn't help the person, then I couldn't help the animal. I, I, I know, I love your stories. I can relate to every one of them. You know, the the couple that's fighting, you know, and then the the dog is attacking the husband and keeping him out of the bedroom because he's yeah. protecting the wife. You know, or um, I remember one was really fascinating. It was uh, uh, the a dachshund that was paralyzed. Mm. And she had no, you know, control from mid back on back, you know, from her mid back uh -huh. in her tail. And I'm and I'm working with her. I'm going. This is a shared issue. And I said, you know, you person, you know, my client, you also have a problem on this vertebrae. And she said, oh my God, how did you know? Yeah. You know, her back was also a problem. So I worked on her. And guess what? The dog's tail starts wagging. And she starts getting more control in her hind end. And she's actually able to walk again yeah. because we've, you know, identified whose is whose and whose issues are whose and, yes. and worked with that. So I'm so delighted you're sharing these stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I one, love one other quick thing I want to share is, you know, the uh, animals don't want us to be in pain on any level, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental. So a lot of times what they do is they're going to take on our stuff uh, on a physical level sometimes, emotionally, etc. But we also do the same for them sometimes. There, There is this. I mean, uh, parents do it for their children, uh, etc. But one of the things that I found to help the animals let go um, is to have a special conversation with them and how I approach it is to ask the clients to sit um, and I'll talk to the animals about this too and to say to them you know thank you so much for helping your people see what what's going on and what they need to nurture within themselves and they get that but now what they need you to do is let go of that because you really next need to empower them because it is their lesson to learn and so they must go through that so that word empower when an animal hears that that they have to let go because that's what's really going to help the people and empower them to learn that lesson so it isn't uh, repeated the animals really disengage them and they'll let go and the people can uh, can take it from there so that's always uh, helped by saying it that way the other thing too that I found is um, there are some young living essential oils and one is white angelica and it's fabulous to help people or animals let go of that pattern uh, that they have of wanting to take on the responsibility and from a Bach flower point of view the one that helps is called the elm ELM so I wanted to share that with uh, with everybody and also um, uh, one of my clients uses her animals as a barometer of how well she's doing in life Yes, you know, I love um, that. I have a course on this topic called Barometers oh, of Our Souls. Oh my so, gosh, yeah, it, yeah. it's absolutely fabulous that you can see, I can see the animals I used to have in my life were very emotionally complicated. They really were, but that reflected me. Yes. And now my animals are, Val, are so different. They're not complicated. It's to have this just joy of life, extremely affectionate. And I was more, years ago, more aloof, kept myself, you know, a, a little bit distant from people. And that's how my animals were. Uh, Jesse was that way. And now I have a golden retriever who, oh my gosh, is the most loving animal I've ever had. Yeah, I was going to say, that there's the other mirror too, right? The yeah. one that says, you know what, let's get you over that. So I'm going to pull you right into the middle. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what's nice is you can use the barometers to see the new animals that you're bringing into your life. Ah, look at that. I'm growing. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, Evolving, so growing. It's a nice, feeling. It's a nice uh, evaluation of yourself to say, wow, I've come a long way. You right. know, and right. the, the clients can do that for themselves. Yeah. I love that. So, so Carol, you have a formula or a process of some kind that you say is necessary to be able to see the reflection and act upon it. Um, what What is the formula or process? The formula would be similar to to Jesse. You see the activity going on, and you go, "Okay, 
what is this? You get in touch with your feelings. I was angry. The next step is, well, why am I angry? Um, is there anything that happened to me in the past? You look at that. Um, and then you have to then say, are you willing um, to make that change within yourself? What the animals are showing us is not that there is anything wrong with us. What they're showing us is that part of ourself that really needs to be nurtured. So, um, and then acting upon it. So, you could say, what do you like about your animal? What do you admire about your animal? Why? Because that's, that's an aspect of you as well. Let them mirror that. What do you dislike about your animal and why? You know, what, what's there that you're not happy with? You may not be happy with that aspect of yourself. How can you change your behavior, behavior to help them? Uh, and then really get down to the nitty-gritty of what is the re actual reflection. Um, and what is each of your animals trying to teach you about yourselves. And, um, and then look at the animals you've had in the past and the animals now in, the, in your life. Do you see them as a barometer for how well you are doing? Uh, and to reflect the changes you've made in your life. So it's, it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of asking yourself questions. One question after another after another until you really see where that behavior um, comes from within you. Yeah. I like that. I'm just thinking too, if you see the same behavior in more than one animal, yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, you're the common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> so, surprise! <laughs> Best to pay attention, eh? So, yes. um, so, you say, one of the, what do you think one of the primary reasons is that animals are in our life? Uh, for me, if I had like 10 seconds and, you know, <laughs> on a stage somewhere and they said, 10 seconds, what would you say? I would say one of the primary reasons that they're in our life is to help teach us to love ourselves the way they love us unconditionally. Mm. Val, for me, they're, and I'm, I'm sure for you, they're the greatest role models we could ever hope to have. You know, they live unconditional love, um, and, and they they don't care what job um, we have. They don't care how much money we make. They don't care what we look at. They simply love us for who we are. And so that in that department, they are much more evolved than we are uh, because we are still loving uh, conditionally. So for me, they're um, great role models and that to me is the primary reason of why they're with us. Right. I, you know, I think of them as soulmates. You know, they're, yes. they're in our life to help us heal, evolve, and grow. Absolutely. And, and together we become better people and they get to fulfill their purpose with us yeah. as well. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anything else you want to leave us with before we close it down? You know, I'd love to leave you with another story. Cool, I love okay. stories. A quickie, a quickie. Um, client called. Um, he was an alcoholic, and he had gone on another binge. His family wouldn't help him, and um, he decided to go down to the shelter and get a dog. He got a dog. You know, um, his life started changing a bit, but he was still drinking. But when he would go on a binge, the dog would get seizures, would have a seizure, and he would have to be, you know, um, sober enough to be able to bring the, the dog down to the uh, vet clinic. So this happened every time he was on a binge, the dog would have a seizure. Well, guess who stopped drinking? His wow. parents couldn't help him, wow. his families couldn't help him, but it's this dog that changed his life. So this is a sober man, and guess after after it was real, after the dog knew that this man really is truly sober, the dog stopped having seizures. Wow! And I go, you know, this man wanted to change. He really did, but he just didn't know how to go about it. And you know, there's where when you really call out to the universe, universe provides you with what you need for yourself, and they know the best. And here comes this dog. Who nobody else could help him but this dog. So I, I look at that story and I go, wow, you know, the um, the degree, the depth of how they can change our lives is just uh, incredible to me. It's astonishing, and yeah. so you know, I I hope that everyone listening um, today 
that when you look at your animals, you will see them as the wise teachers, angels, guides, and healers that they truly are, and have a different way of approaching any kind of problems, whether their health or behavior, or even the the wonderful positive reflections. Take that as a the brilliant uh, compliment <laughs> that it can be. So well done. Thank you, Carol, for bringing this out and illustrating it so beautifully. I know that anyone. Uh, hearing this now will be forever changed as you won't look at your animal <laughs> the same way again. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, well, thanks for inviting me, Val. And, and you know, I congratulate you on this uh, wonderful mission uh, of yours, inviting us to talk with you and share each of our areas of expertise. And, the, the you know, the main mission is to help how the... Um, help change how the world thinks and feels about animals and you are certainly doing that so um, thank I yeah. thank you very much thank you I, our mission is to reach and teach one million animal lovers around the world uh, yeah. this year so thank you for partnering up with me to help do that because I believe when we do that we will change the world as we know it because it we will be better people for sure so absolutely yeah, thanks everybody for watching and coming and supporting the cause. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for loving animals. And I've been talking with the wonderful Carol Gurney from the GurneyInstitute.org. Um, please do share this. Don't keep it a secret. Um, pick up your Quick Start to Animal Talk course. Go to Carol's website. Check out her stuff. Uh, we love you. We love your animals. I wish you all the best. So thank you all for coming. We'll talk to you another time. So until next time. Have fun. Go rock and roll with your animals. Have fun. Right. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Until next time. Bye-bye.